Hello students, this is the introduction to module 3.1. In this module, uh, we'll start with a viewing assignment. I have loaded one of the three-part PBS series on American photography. The, um, we're just viewing the middle portion because the first portion deals with the earliest days of photography. And although that stuff is historically interesting, it's not as relevant as the middle portion because that covers the period from the 50s and the 60s when photography really changed the way that Americans uh, sort of got their news and uh, viewed what was happening in our culture and also sort of greatly increased the influence of American culture throughout the world. So it's a 55 minute documentary. And one of the things I like about uh, YouTube documentaries is I can watch them at a faster than regular speed and still get all the content. So uh, you'll view that 55 minute documentary, uh, part two of the PBS series on American photography. Um, then the next thing is uh, a uh, essay called The Rhetoric of the Image by a French philosopher by the name of Roland Barthes. And uh, he is a semiotician. If you think back to uh, the first module, we had an introduction to linguistics, and so semiotics is the study of signs. So Roland Barthes is a, a very interesting, um, he's no longer alive, but he was a very influential French philosopher. And uh, students in past semesters have found this reading to be rather challenging. So what I've done is I've created three separate videos in which I attempt to unpack what it is that Roland Barthes is communicating. So you should read the essay and uh, you might just read it and say, I get it all, I don't need to watch the videos. Uh, but I'm suspecting that several of you might benefit from looking at my videos which uh, explain the uh, Roland Barthes essay. Uh, then you're going to have another reading by Lupton and Miller, that power couple uh, of graphic designers. And uh, this one is on the law of the letter. So again, it's someone who is taking a structuralist approach, but this time to uh, fonts and uh, typography. And there's a uh, quiz on that. I have uh, viewed and scored your visual autobiographies and I enjoyed them greatly. And so what you'll get is a score based on that, um, uh, the, uh, the crap principles, contrast, uh, contrast, contrast, repetition, alignment, and proximity, as well as overall composition. So you see the scores that I gave it and then sort of an explanation of it. And I'll tell you a little bit about my method, which is um, I look at what you have posted. I then print it uh, onto paper if it is something that is printable because uh, I have a keener eye in terms of layout and design. Some things are not necessarily printable. Now, there's a particular problem that can arise if say you use PowerPoint as a couple people did, and it has to do with alignment. So I regularly use a MacBook Pro. So I have a Macintosh version of PowerPoint and somebody, if they had a Macintosh version of PowerPoint and produced it, what they produced and sent to me would be pretty much the same as what I got. Sometimes when somebody is using a Windows version, they produce something and then I open it on my Mac and it actually looks different. And the reason for that sometimes is because one person may have one collection of fonts on their machine and the person on the other end doesn't have the same collection of fonts. So what happens is the receiver's machine says, okay, we're gonna substitute this font for that font. That may be fine, except that the fonts might not be the same width, the same size, and that can greatly affect alignment. And so since alignment was one of the things you were being valued on, that could affect you. But I'm pretty sure that in this particular case, there was nobody whose work uh, was misaligned because of what I received on my end. But a way to solve that problem in the future, if you know that you're sending something uh, from a machine going to someone who might be using the other platform, is to then publish it or, uh, uh, what's the other word for it, export it as a PDF. Because then if you like what the PDF looks like, then the person on the other end is going to get something that looks exactly the same, uh, whereas that might not be the case if uh, you look you like what it looks like on your end and the person on the other end is using uh, one of the programs in Microsoft Office or, say, one of the resident programs uh, that is native to a Macintosh. Okay, so um, uh, also I am now going to give you an opportunity to share this design 
uh, first design project you did. You can have four design projects overall. You've got your visual autobiography. You've got one coming up, which is the impossible, believable, aspirational self-portrait. You have one then that is a motion graphic or video assignment, and you have one which is your final project. So you are going to have to share one of them. I'll create spaces where if you want to, you can share all four of them, but I'm going to uh, require that everybody share at least one. And when I say share it, I mean you're going to post it to that place where the rest of the class gets to see it. And then you're also going to attach some commentary to it, such as describing your design process or describing what you yourself are particularly pleased with, or maybe some aspect of it that you're not pleased with. So in a separate video, I will explain how that uh, sort of share uh, of one of one or more of your design projects is going to work. Um, and then in a separate announcement, I will talk about visual communication in the news for this week because this was a busy week for visual communication in the news uh, and it continues to be busy. And then uh, finally, I will uh, soon publish the module for uh, module 3.2, but I wanted to get this one out so that you have access to what you are to view, your uh, two reading assignments, and your quiz on one of your reading assignments. So I'll uh, wrap this up and post it and talk to you soon.